Okay, thank you. Welcome back, guys. So the first question I have from Karabo Makheta. He says, please help me define what is chemical equilibrium. So let's write it out. So in your exam, technically you'll say define chemical equilibrium. So for chemical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium. Now, a nice thing about physical science is that spelling doesn't really count. Equilibrium. Because most physical science teachers, accounting or math teachers cannot spell. So chemical equilibrium is, we say it is the state, rather use state than phase, it is a state reached by a reversible. Now remember, the word reversible is very, very important because when we're talking about chemical equilibrium, we are talking about a reaction that can either shift to the left or it can shift to the right. It can either favor the forward or the reverse reaction. So it's important to say a reversible, but it reached by a reversible reaction by a reversible reaction when the rate, when the rate of the forward, don't use left and right in this case, forward and the reverse, the forward and the reverse reaction, reaction become equal. Now this is also very crucial because when we do chemical equilibrium, I want you guys to think about it like this. We have a system or we have a perfect family. Everything is absolutely perfect. Everyone has exactly the same things and everything is working properly. But now, if somebody buys a car, somebody must ask must buy a car. If somebody loses a car, somebody must ask must buy lose a car. So this is the forward and the reverse reactions that need to balance each other out the whole time in the system. That's why we say that when the reaction becomes equal, the next one that is very crucial that they also like asking, let me choose a different color, is dynamic, is dynamic equilibrium. So please don't get these two confused because in an exam they can give you a graph and they can ask you which point is chemical equilibrium happening and where is dynamic equilibrium happening. But the definition for dynamic equilibrium is we say it is a state in a reversible, in a reversible reaction where, again, where the forward, where the forward and the reverse, where the forward and the reverse reactions, reactions occur at the same, occur at the same, at the same time. So those are the two definitions that you guys really, really, really need to know. Okay, let me look at one of another question that you guys have asked, and then, oh, okay, so you see another person also asked what is chemical equilibrium, and then I have Rachel also asked me what's dynamic equilibrium again. And then another thing that I see that you guys have asked me was actually a lot of graphs. So let's do a little bit of graphs. And then I'm going to show you guys how we answer the graphs. Let me start with Rachel's graph. So Rachel's question says, they've given us some information about X and Y and what is happening, but they've represented the information in a graph. Now, the tricky thing with physics is, because scientists are really lazy people, they don't really like writing and writing paragraphs and so forth, we want to represent everything in a graph. So if you are given a graph, make sure, number one, all your questions that, or all your answers that you're gonna get from your questions come from the graph. Don't create anything that's not there. If you're given a mole versus time, if they ask you about the moles, look at the moles on that graph. If they ask you something about time, ask you that, unless it says calculate. Then you can definitely calculate what the new value or whatever will be, but otherwise, if they've asked you something on the graph, make sure you answer everything that's on that graph. Okay, so the graph, by, the graph from Rachel looks like this. So we have X and Y, and on the top here, I've got something that's moving down, and then it curves up. Let me use another color, and they've named this one A. And then I have something moving from here, and it's moving all the way down, but when it gets here, it has a little arch, like this. Now, already we know from physics, all these little arches and dams and dips, 
they actually mean something in terms of physical sciences. This one is going up, it comes here, and then it goes all the way down. Now, based on what we are looking here, we can actually establish or determine if we have some equilibrium or if we have dynamic equilibrium and so forth. But already what I can see here is that I have two products that we're reacting. I have two reactants rather that we're reacting and then they formed a product. So let's see. So this one going up, they've named it C. And this one coming down, they've named it B. And then they have values for us here. They've got a 16. This one is an 8. And this one is a 0. So this is moles. And N. And this is time in seconds. Now, the question here says, Using the information on the graph, already that is your first clue. Using the information on the graph, write down the value of x where it started at the starting point. So based on looking at this, we can see, um, sorry, the values of a, b, and c. We can see, let's start with c. If this is c, c initially started at 0. So c would be 0 moles, and you're going to get a mark for that. If we look at a, how many moles were pumped in from A? Looking at the graph, we have 16. So A will have a starting value of 16 moles. You, that, I mean, it only counts for one mark. So it's actually pretty simple. If we're looking at B, we can see 8 moles must have been pumped into the cylinder. So 8 moles of B was actually injected in the cylinder. Now, for a question like this, well, Rachel's question really doesn't have much more because then it asks about exothermic and endothermic, but another interesting question that they can ask from this is for you then to calculate the Kc. So based on what you are given here, you will then have to know, okay, if A, they put 16 moles, that will be your initial value. B, they've pumped 8 moles, this will also be your initial value. And C is zero, so C means it's the product. I mean, when you're baking a cake, you have all your eggs and all your recipes and, or maybe flour, baking powder and whatever. You don't have a cake yet. You are working towards getting a cake. Z cakes are zero, but ing ingredients is galore. So you have a lot of A, a lot of B because you want to make a product. And then that's why C starts off at zero. But as it keeps occurring, I can see the lines are going up or going down and so forth. So something must be happening. Already by just looking at this, this graph, I can see that this must be the forward reaction, also the forward reaction. Now, ask me how I, don't, I know that. If you are making a reaction or during a reaction, the reactants are, are being used up. You can't say the more eggs you crack when you're baking a cake, the eggs are getting more on the side. No, the eggs are being used up. They go less and less and less. Think of it like this. If we had to give values for all of these things, or all, all these lines here, this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, we've got an eight, no, 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 going up. If I start off at 16, I go down, now I'm there, now I'm there, now I'm there. Obviously, it shows that as the time goes on, let's give time, let's, have, let's say time also has values here. I can see that when these moles were being used up, this was the time value here. When these moles were being used up, this was the time value and so forth. So I can see that the forward reaction, these are being used up. But here at zero, now that I'm baking a cake and it's in the oven and it's, ri it's rising and all that stuff, I am now forming a cake. So when my products were at zero, now they're getting more and 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 so forth, right? So technically, in physical sciences, that's how you then have to analyze or look at a graph. And in some scenarios, in some situations, they actually then tell you um, temperature was increased or concentration was increased and so forth. And remember, when we're talking about the KC, there's only three things that can affect the KC, temperature, concentration, and pressure.